Hey guys, welcome to part three of the basic platformer controller series. In this video, we're going to go over how to implement your horizontal movement. The first thing we need to do is go into Godot and select project from the strip at the top and go into project settings. Once you're in there, select input map and we're going to add some actions. So the first one is going to be up. So just type it here and press enter. And then we'll add left, and then down, and then right. And once you have all these in, just click the plus icon next to up. And if you click in this box, it will be listening for input. So the key that we want to use for up, we'll just press W on our keyboard, and that will register that as up. And we'll do the same for the rest of these, just going down the line. Left is going to be A, down is going to be S, and right is going to be D. That easy. So now we'll get into the actual code where we left off. Just open this file up. And the first thing we're going to do is add another region. And I'm going to call this input. And we're going to need a couple of variables. The first one will be an export private bool underscore use raw input. And we'll just default this to true. The next one is going to be a private vector2 underscore input. And we're also going to create a method here. It's going to be a private void called gather input. And we're going to leave that alone for right now. And what you're going to do is add a class. You can do that by pressing Control Shift A or clicking on the project in the hierarchy and selecting Add Class or Interface. I'm using Rider. If you're using Visual Studio, it will look slightly different, but it's very much similar to this. So I'm just going to add a class with the name Extensions. There we go. And now in here, what we want to do is actually add an extension method for the vector2, which will return raw input for us. So the way we're going to start this is by first making this class static. And it doesn't really need a namespace. And inside this class, we are going to make a public static vector2. And we will call this get raw. It's going to take in this vector2 vector. And we're going to use a switch case with a lambda operator to, to perform this. So we're going to say vector dot x equals vector dot x switch and come down here put our semicolon on and we'll just say greater than zero and then our lambda operator we will return one less than zero lambda operator and we will return minus one and the default case we will return zero and we're going to do the same thing for the y so we can just copy this replace the x's with y's and below that we're just going to return vector just like that 
And what this actually does is returns raw input from any vector two. And what I mean by raw is that the value can only be one, minus one, or zero. It will not have any floating points in between. So once we have that, we'll just save that off and go back into the platformer controller. And the next thing we want to do is go into our process region. And we're going to call another method here. It's going to be public override void underscore process. And it will be looking for a double delta. Same as physics process. The way that this differs, I'll just add some summaries here. Physics process is called every physics frame. And the default for that is 60 frames per second if you haven't changed anything. Process is called every frame. So whatever the frame rate is, process is called each and every frame, whereas physics process is limited and it will only be called 60 frames a second by default. Inside process, we're going to call our gather input method. And now let's flesh out the gather input method. So what we want to do here is say underscore input equals input dot get vector. And now it's going to be looking for all of our directions. And you'll see that it's looking for string name instead of strings. So before we actually implement this, let's go ahead and set that up. Because if we don't set this up as string names here, then we will incur a marshalling cost as we call this every frame. And it creates more overhead. And we're going to try to avoid that. So we will set up private string name say underscore up equals new string name up. And we're just going to do this for all of the input that we set up. Okay, so now we'll get back in here. And the order in which it wants them, if we check, it wants negative x first, so that's going to be left. And then it wants positive x, so that's going to be underscore right. Then it wants negative y, which is underscore up, and positive y, which is underscore down. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we'll say if underscore use raw input, we will say underscore input equals underscore input dot get raw. Okay, perfect. So let's just get a summary on here. And we're going to use this method to gather all of our input for jumping and for moving left and right. So the next thing we're going to do is add another region. Called animation. And the first thing we need here is a reference to our animated sprite 2D. And we'll just call that underscore sprite. And we are going to put a method in here as well called flip sprite. We can go ahead and start fleshing that out. So 
So the first thing we need to do is say underscore sprite dot flip h for horizontal equals underscore input dot x. And then we're going to use that funny switch again. And we will say less than zero lambda true greater than zero lambda false. And the default case will be underscore sprite dot flip h. So if they're not holding any direction, we don't actually want to flip the sprite. What this says is it will flip if we're going left. It will not be flipped if we're going right. And if they're not holding any input at all, it will retain whatever flip it had. So this will flip the character sprite based on player input. Okay. Now we're going to make another region up here above process. We'll call this one initialize. And in here, we are going to set up a method as well as another method. So we're going to have a public override void underscore ready. And if you're familiar with Unity, this is the same as the start method. So this is called once on start. And we're going to have another private void called gather requirements. And in here, we're just going to say underscore sprite equals get node with the angle brackets. And in here, we would put the type. So it'll be animated sprite 2D. And this is where we'll put the name, which in our case is just animated sprite 2D. And we'll use this method to gather any requirements for class functionality. Okay, perfect. So down here in our velocity method, we're going to have to add a few things in here. So the first one is going to be an export. And it's going to be a private float move speed. And we'll just default that to 100. It might feel slow. We'll, we'll test it out. And we're going to need another export. And it will be a private float as well. And this one will be called acceleration. And we'll default that to 7. And another export. And this will also be a private float. And we'll call this deceleration. And we will default that to 10. So the reason I use different values for acceleration and deceleration is it feels better if the character decelerates faster than he accelerates. OK, so the next thing we want to do So I'll just add this summary first. Another private void. This is going to be calculate velocity x. And it's also going to take in a ref vector 2, and we'll just call it vel again. And summary. So in here, uh, before we get started, we actually need one more variable. So that's going to be a private vector2 underscore target velocity x. Yeah, let's just make this a float instead. Yeah, like that. So in here. We're going to say underscore target velocity x equals 
underscore input dot x times move speed. And then we're going to say val dot x equals math f dot move toward val dot x underscore target velocity x. And then we're going to use an inline if statement. It might look a little strange if you've never seen it before, but it's just shorthand for a longer version of an if statement. So we're going to check the sign, mathf.sign underscore input dot x is equal to, so the double equals there, mathf dot sign underscore velocity dot x and a little question mark there at the end. And if that's true, then we will use our acceleration value. And if not, we will use the deceleration value. And we'll make sure that we call that in this method. Calculate velocity x, and we will pass in the reference to our velocity here once again. And just to make sure this flip sprite works, let's go ahead and throw that into our process as well. And as long as I didn't mess anything up, this should work fine. And he moves, but we're getting a few errors. So let's take a look. No reference. Okay, that's an easy fix. All I did was forget to call this method right here. It was looking for a reference to this, and I, we set up the code for it, but we never actually called this method. So by calling it here and ready, that should eliminate that error. And there we go. We got back and forth, and he flips to the direction he is moving. Excellent. So that's pretty much it for um, implementing the horizontal movement with the acceleration and deceleration independent of one another. So if you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And always like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. See you in the next one.